This mini tutorial will familiarize you with some main operations involving layers, which will bring you up to speed quickly. It's not intended to teach you all about layers in general. However, many of the layer functions that I don't touch on here, I'll be sure to cover in other lessons in this tutorial. Layers, as you already know, just about revolutionized the way we work in Photoshop when they were introduced for the first time back in version 3. They allowed you to create artwork in stages and added a whole lot of flexibility and creativity to the process. So we'll start by going over the lay of the land. Here we have an image that's a composite with many artwork elements on separate layers. The first thing to notice are the eye icons in the column on the left. They indicate which layers are visible and an empty spot here means that the contents of that layer are invisible. A tip here is to option or alt click an eye icon to view the contents of just that layer. Then you can option or alt click again and you go back to viewing all the layers again. This can be quite handy when checking the contents of individual layers. To create a new layer, you can click on the new layer icon below, which looks like a dog-eared page, or use the handy shortcut of Command Shift N on a Macintosh or Control Shift N on PCs. This lets you name the layer at the same time. To quickly add a blank new layer without naming one, go ahead and hold down the Option key along with those keyboard shortcuts, namely Option, Command, Shift, N on the Macintosh. And there we have a new layer. I'm big on naming layers because it can be quite challenging to manage a whole stack of unnamed layers. To duplicate a layer, either Option or Alt drag it in the layer stack until you see a black line between and then let go. My favorite technique to do this is to type Command J or Control J and then the targeted layer is duplicated. If anything was selected on the layer, then only that object will be duplicated when you type the shortcut. It's extremely handy and I use it all the time to float a copy of an object right on top. To rename a layer, you can double click the name. To delete it, either drag it to the trash can below or Control click or right click and choose Delete Layer. The opacity control right up at the top of the layer palette lets you make pixels on the layer appear transparent. My favorite tip here involves the scrubby slider, which also shows up in the type palette and some other places in Photoshop. You'll notice that the cursor changes to a finger with a double-headed arrow. If you place the cursor on the name opacity in the palette, you can click and drag in either direction to increase or reduce the opacity value. It's very intuitive and dynamic. Try it, you'll love it. Then there are the fabulous and magical blend modes at the top. This menu full of choices gives you a number of ways for the pixels in the current layer to interact with the layer below. And you can also cycle through these blend modes by holding down shift as you type the plus key to go forward. And shift minus to cycle backwards. Again, that's Shift plus and Shift minus, something you can do for hours while waiting for inspiration to strike. Okay, moving forward, just below the Blend Mode menu are the lock icons. These let you partially or fully lock the contents of your layers. When the lock is solid, it means that all of its attributes are locked and can't be edited. 